All right, guys. How are we doing? My name is Devin Smithcamp. And I am John Rio Sertuche, and we are the founders of Clue. Um, we're so thankful for you guys to have us here again, and we're going to keep it as brief as possible so we can leave some room for questions at the end. Now, just see us last year. Was anyone attending? Awesome, awesome. So glad to have you guys back. That's great. Uh, for everyone else that's new, uh, last year we talked a bit about how John and I met out in college in San Francisco and kind of our journey to becoming millennial entrepreneurs. And we just kind of talked about, you know, the do's and don'ts of trying to start your own business. And we were relatively green in the field and we had just kind of started our first startup, uh, Clue, as you can see up there. Um, and so it's been a really long year for us. And uh, so today we're actually going to talk a little bit more about the application like we didn't last time and some of the trials and tribulations and the ups and downs that we've had in the past year. But if you are interested in learning more about our story, it was actually published in the Valley Entrepreneur Journal last quarter, uh, 10 Years of Women's Business Center. We thank our friends over there. So there's a centerfold article in there that kind of talks about our story. And you're more than welcome to grab a copy after the presentation if that interests you. Uh, so let's start out talking about Clue. So uh, it's an idea we came up with a year and a half ago. It would have been November 2013 when we kind of came up with this concept uh, of a novelty consumer level application that's based on an old family tradition of mine actually uh, as gift hunting as opposed to gift giving. So the idea is not to your, uh, let's say your loved one on an anniversary. It's not here honey, here's your, here's your present. It was creating these personalized scavenger hunt adventures to finding their gift. So it's a really personalized adventure um, that we had this idea for. We were lucky enough to find some local investors and we started working on it right away. Uh, once we started fleshing out the concept a little bit more and really realizing what we were working with with the user interface and our feature sets, we realized that we were sitting on something much larger and that's kind of where we started developing our business strategies a little bit more and kind of started fine-tuning Clue into what it is today, into the product that we're launching next week that we're very excited about. Um, so what changed is basically the Clue application a long time ago, uh, the idea was that you would create these adventures and what would happen is you would guide users to different locations based on clues. And those clues, um, like this one for example, let's see if anyone can solve it. Uh, these arches are famous, a golden hello. You can get your next clue for here to go. Anybody? There we go, simple enough, nice job. So what we realized is that we could really guide foot traffic in the real world to anywhere we wanted to, whether that be small local businesses, larger big businesses in a city, city landmarks, uh, vendor or sponsored booths at a trade show or a convention. So we realized that we were really sitting on a powerful marketing tool in that aspect. Uh, another big portion of Clue is social sharing, sharing your photos and your experiences along each Clue quest. And uh, so what we realized is by encouraging people to share their experiences, it not only drives foot traffic in the real world throughout each event, so every uh, participant in a Clue Quest is going to stop by McDonald's at least one time and engage with them. But by allowing them to actually share those things on social media, um, what it does is it creates a digital footprint of that event online as well. So it really becomes a two-sided marketing tool online and offline that uh, was really great because we shifted our focus from being a consumer-centric product to a business-to-business -business level, enterprise-level product that actually allows us to have multiple revenue streams, which is obviously great for us as well as our investors and shareholders. Um, so in the past year, things have really dramatically kind of increased and we've realized this business-to-business -business connection is really, really healthy for us. And uh, so in 2014, in January, we received our first seed round investment and we got to work right away. And uh, it wasn't all perfect. We started off by, uh, of course, looking for some developers. And uh, we looked all over Texas, we looked overseas, we uh, ended up deciding that we wanted to keep it local. So we looked around, we found a development team that said that they were professionals in the field, that they could develop any web development application for us, and uh, they said that they can develop our app, no problem. So we gave them the job, and um, well, uh, we signed a contract with them that said about four, we gave them four months to give us a completely uh, fluent application that worked perfectly for the iTunes store, and we could launch. So well, fast forward four months, uh, me and Devin, I guess, so we're at the doorstep of X Games, uh, trying to get a meeting with the corporate, uh, the head of corporate partnerships, and we did. We got a meeting with him and uh, we talked to him a bit. He loved our application. He said he's done stuff like this before, not in an application but on paper. And uh, he would definitely love to have us at X Games. So we were supposed to launch last year at X Games and uh, we went back to our programmers and about two weeks before X Games and the product they showed us wasn't, wasn't all there. It was nowhere near there. Um, so we had to push that timeline. Six months later, we reached our 10 month mark and uh, well, 
it wasn't on par. <laughs> Our product was not perfect. It still needed a lot more work, and uh, it wasn't what we were promised. So we had to drop, sadly, drop that development team and uh, move on. But we found uh, some more money, of course, and continued looking for an, uh, in, in a uh, development team. And we found one in California, in L.A. It was Start House, and uh, the head of the Start House is Chris Econ, and they've developed multiple applications for Sony, Walmart, uh, Lulu, Grinder. You guys may know that. Um, and uh, they are making Clue at this point. And, well, one thing that they did have was the LTX software, which uh, is a military-grade GPS technology, which originally was our next step in Clue in uh, the first place. So we took that as an opportunity, and we put that in as well. And two months later, where we are now, we have a completed application, completely fluent, it's perfect, and we are about to release in the next four days. And I'll let you talk about that. So obviously, uh, we're very excited about that. Um, so what we'd like to speak a bit about real quickly is just in that 10-month period, um, it was tough for us because we were first-time founders and we were very, very excited to, you know, find this, this seed money and just dive right into development, right? And we obviously wanted this local team to grow with us and, to, you know, we could both prove we were from the Valley and that we were making something and we thought it was going to be really great for their portfolio and for them to grow as well. Um, but what happened was a couple months in with them, maybe two, three months in, we started seeing some red flags. And that's a big uh, thing that we look for now is when you notice a red flag and you don't handle it accordingly, you need to jump on that. And so little things like, you know, missing deadlines, especially obviously uh, during the X Games time, you know, we had said, okay, we need to launch at this time no matter what. And so, okay, this is great, this is great. And we were getting closer and closer. And every time they kept saying we're going to be in and we had to eventually end up calling it ourselves. They didn't even say that we weren't going to be ready, although we knew that they knew that the product wasn't going to be ready in time. So we were just generally when you start seeing those red flags, it's a, it's a big sign of bad business. And uh, so we're lucky that we stepped away and that we were able to find some new developers who really knew what they were doing. And uh, we've learned a lot about that and really had to redirect. And the bummer was that, you know, in our first couple months, we hit social media really, really hard. Uh, and we ended up getting just under 6,000 fans on our Facebook page in just the first couple months. And they were all really eager and anticipating our launch. And so we said, we're going to be at X Games. And we put a ton of, you know, marketing out for that. And we had to push it. And then we had another date two months later that, you know, the app was going to be done. And we had to push it again. And, and so it makes us look bad. And, you know, as first-time founders, like we said, we just want to get our product out there and we want it to be perfect. So, exactly. So we roll with the punches. Um, but now we are very excited. So we are here to say that uh, actually next week we'll be launching our application at the Launch Festival in San Francisco. It's the premier event for tech companies to actually launch to uh, investors, to tech bloggers, marketers. Uh, in San Francisco, it's a 10,000 to 12,000 person event. We'll be flying out on Saturday to where John and I actually met and got our roots. So we're very excited to get back to San Francisco for that. Uh, we've got a trade show booth up there. We'll be giving away uh, a couple of drones. Everyone familiar with what drones are? Quadcopters with the cameras, really fun to fly around. We'll be giving out four of those, and one of them is actually going to be through social media. Uh, so you guys actually can have a chance to win that by testing out our application next week online. So in a few minutes here, we'll get a slide up with our social media information, and you guys can go ahead and follow us, share us, and we'll let you know how exactly it is that you can get in on that. Um, aside from that, other good things that have been happening, uh, we've been talking with Collision Conference in Las Vegas. Uh, they're really interested in how our tool works as a marketing tool within their, or as a networking tool, I'm sorry, within their networking conference. And they may actually use Clue as the way to guide attendee foot traffic throughout their venue. And it's a really huge conference, so we're excited about that. Um, most importantly, actually, this is some, a recent development for John and I. Uh, there's a company called, uh, an organization that's called Founders Society. And uh, it's an elite invite-only organization of the top uh, young business founders and entrepreneurs in the world. Uh, it's the sister corporation of YEC. I'm sure if anyone's familiar with that, it's the Young Entrepreneur Council. Um, it's for their smaller stage startup companies, and they actually just launched that this month. And John and I were accepted. Uh, they have an acceptance rate lower than what they said is any Ivy League school in the, uh, in the nation. And they accepted John and I into their first inaugural batch of members, and so we've uh, been able to join that community and we get to start uh, you know, networking and working with them uh, at events all over the nation starting next month. So we're really excited about that. Um, but, so, one thing that we didn't get a chance to do last time while we were here. Start that. Some oh, other people that uh, we were actually, some other people are actually going to start doing some events with our really exciting is going to be Coca-Cola, UFC, X Games, Circuit of Americas. Um, and it's growing from there, but those are just a little small example of 
things we're going to be doing this next year. So definitely keep an eye out. Gordon, yeah, yes, of course. So it's interesting. You got into this kind of event thing uh, and guide uh, or, or influence foot traffic uh, at specific events. So I wonder about your pricing strategy uh, and how you're going to actually make money uh, on this. So Absolutely. you have a conference organizer and you can charge them something to have clue at their sure. conference? Sure. Okay. So what's interesting, and like we said, the business you know strategy has dramatically changed in the past year for Clue, where it started out as this consumer-driven application where we just wanted to get user growth and we wanted to scale as any modern startup does, find users, take in venture capital, and you know, hope for exit strategy, right? What we realized then when we figured out that this marketing tool was really powerful online and offline um, is that, yeah, we can actually start driving multiple revenue streams. So exactly. So if we go into an event, we can charge based on the amount of users. Um, the event, you know, obviously will pay us. We can also then take in additional money if the sponsors in that event, let's say it's a tech conference, for example, and there's six different sponsors that are eager to drive foot traffic to their booth, right? So we can have them pay an additional amount to us on top of their booth fee in order to be a part of our event, which is simultaneous with the event. So it's an optional event in pre-existing events. So let's say we do a tech festival. Uh, it's an optional event for users to, you know, to join in on and attendees to partake in. Generally, there'll be prizes at the end for them, you know, that come from the sponsors, from us, you know, swag from the, from the event itself, et cetera. Um, We're not just doing events. We're also doing permanent packages. Which right. Are, like, like, city, like city tours, things along those lines. Uh, eventually, we'd love to do, you know, uh, something as simple as, you know, in Disney World. You know, have a monthly rotating quest at somewhere like Disney World where people can go and, and attend and, you know, see the new rides and the new hotspots of the venue, et cetera, that can change every month. So we can take in, you know, monthly subscribers and have, you know, recurring revenue based on that as well. But the interesting portion is, is that we plan to do these big marketing events for quite some time, and that's our user growth strategy is by doing these larger events, right? Because every event that we do, we drive, you know, we bring in users, right? And that's ultimately just feeding our user growth strategy. So the idea is that once we surpass, let's say, a million users, we can actually flip back to our beginning concept uh, where we wanted to be a user-centric application and you know, be more about the user growth. And we can be less about the marketing aspect in, in our next version of our application. And we'll actually get into in a moment here. Uh, we'll show you for the very first time. We haven't really released our user interface or anything like that. All of our designs, we'll show you that. Um, and kind of give you a peek into what the future holds. Uh, and the idea is actually to have a community of people actually actively creating and completing their own quests within any major city. So if you traveled, let's say, to Miami, there would be 100 different free and fun events to see everyone's different side of Miami that they like. And so the idea is to create this community of people, and then it just grows from there. So it's less about the marketing and more about the users. But we have to hit maybe that million user mark before we flip into a more user growth started, you know, style company. Any other questions before we kind of get into showing the app a little bit? Yeah, go ahead. Do you guys have uh, software backgrounds or? Uh... We're designers. Uh, we both met at the Academy of Art University in San Francisco. Um, I was actually a game designer and he was a fashion major. So we ultimately flipped that into graphic design. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's what we do. We actually outsource our development to that company, which I just talked about, the Start House, which is uh, their. Neither of us could write a line in a code to save our life. Well, he actually can a little bit. He can a little bit. I, it doesn't work in my head like that at all. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to show you just kind of the user interface that goes along with going on a Clue Quest, right? So this is our brand new redesign that we've made in the past few months with Start House. Uh, relatively simple. So your first step is solving the clues to navigate the Quest map. So you can see on the left hand side there that we've got two different ways to clue now thanks to Start House. The bottom one is our code quest. That's what we had originally launched with. We've got a QR code scanner uh, and generator that was made from the ground up that actually scans a QR code faster than you can blink. It's pretty crazy. Before the code even shows on the screen, it scans it. It's pretty insane. So that's cool. So that's for smaller quests for you know in-house activities. Uh, and then we've obviously got our geo quest using the LTX wide area proximity engine from Start House, and that is uh, captures real-time location data and allows us to actually include these unique boosters. So that's our, our newest feature. We've got a hot and cold compass and a real real destination booster that you use your winnings, your coins, which is our in-app currency, to kind of get an edge on the competition. So obviously hot and cold, getting closer, getting farther, it warns you on your phone. The compass shows you which direction you need to go in and exactly how far away you are. And revealing the next location obviously opens it in the maps and allows you to actually navigate there using maps. And that's the most expensive booster. So that's, you know, so obviously there's the clue there. It was the same one that uh, we had went over earlier. Uh, and then obviously completing the challenges along the way. You can see we've got multiple 
challenges that's encouraging you to engage uh, at, let's say, at, um, well, this one is Taco Bell, for example. This is our, you know, our fast food themed quest. Um, so it says, actually, it's, I don't know if you guys can read it, it's a little bit blurry, but it says, since the Taco Bell Chihuahua was fired, she's been looking for work. What car insurance commercial did she appear in? Um, you know, so just simple things like that. You can ask questions, uh, and engage with your local businesses. Obviously, then we've got the social posts and photo shares, um, which we actually can write ourselves uh, in our application. So if they were to press share, we can include different event-specific hashtags, user tags to really increase and drive social media marketing for the event that we're at. And obviously, the photos capture the more physical challenges and events. Uh, sharing, obviously, really simple. There's your uh, you know, simple photo share. You're going to share it to get your 10 coins. Simply share it off. That's a Twitter share there. Share your post. And obviously, we had pre written that post with the hashtag ClueQuest. You know, we can obviously have any user tags as well in there for the social media marketing purposes. Um, and then, why Clue? Obviously, we've got three different ways that you kind of gain rank and level up. Starting with, you know, leveling up, you're going to start as a level one. A level one, we call you a Clue. It's very simple. And up to uh, level 15 is a Quest Master, which will take a very long time for anyone to get there. Um, but obviously you win really cool awards like the Superstar Award. We've got some pretty awesome minimally designed awards that we make that we give away to showcase and they're rare and you know, specific to each event that you're at. So um, that's pretty cool. And then obviously our in-app currency, the coins, uh, is our most exciting aspect. And you'll get those for every time you complete a, and solve a clue correctly. And then you'll get more as well uh, for completing challenges and finishing quests and getting awards. The ultimate goal is to obviously have that community of people actively creating these events and doing them for these coins. And in our next version of the application, we'll release the coin marketplace in which our sponsors of Clue will be able to give away online retailer coupons, hard goods. Uh, we'll be able to give away merchandise from ourselves and do weekly raffles on different things that you can actually have a monetizable value to the coins that you get within the app for engaging with local businesses in your area. Um, so there will be an eventual, you know, a goal there. John, you want to take this over here? Sure. I mean, these are just some examples of uh, different quests that we can do. Um, concerts, city tours, uh, political events, fundraisers. Uh, and some that we are we're actually going to do pretty soon are uh, campus cash and cash quests, which if you're interested in those, you can definitely ask us some questions about that. But um, that's ultimately it. I think for today. Yeah, guys, we'll keep it nice and short. Let you guys ask whatever questions you'd like to ask. Feel free. The floor is yours. So over here with the uh, com uh, concerts and conventions. Absolutely. Uh, let's just say there's a band, local band in your area, and they're trying to promote their band, uh, their concert. Uh, are you able to sell tickets to the band? How do you connect the uh, band to the Clue Quest? Interesting question. Um, connecting the band to the Clue Quest would generally just be through social media. You know, through our social media channels um, is going to be how we do a lot of our marketing. You know, if we're in a certain city doing a quest, obviously we'll reach out to local media channels as well. Um, but again, the amount of marketing that we do for a certain event is going to depend, obviously, on how much we get paid by that event or by those sponsors, right? So you would ask the band for money to promote their event? Well, it depends. Or, it's or based on the number of people you would be able to... Go out to your system. marketing group and say, hey, Coca-Cola, are you interested in uh, advertising to this uh, concert here? Sure. So we'll, we'll, we'll round up sponsors, obviously, whether they be sponsors that are already at the event or sponsors that we bring in ourselves to obviously cover our costs. So, um, uh, an example of a concert, um, South by Southwest, we plan on doing a secret show quest throughout 6th Street. So, I mean, nobody's really going to know about these shows. It's just like the whole Twitter situation where the band tweets where they're at. Um, it's going to be a whole secret underground quest, I guess, to go see these specific bands. I mean, little stuff like that, just to market the bands as well as the venues themselves. They, uh, yeah. But, but I think what you were getting is that, like selling tickets you know, through oh, the app tickets, or anything yeah. like that. Yeah, we don't do any, any sort of sales through the app. Eventually, we will open up to actually getting redeemable rewards at different businesses. Coupons. We've got a way that we can do it, um, but it was never one of our immediate feature sets. It will be added so that if you, you know, actually check in at, let's say, McDonald's, you may get a dollar off of your... Happy meal, or you know, whatever people get these days at McDonald's, you know, and so we can we can offer rewards in that sort of a sense, and you know, if we're if we're gonna if we're gonna um, you know try to market that band, I mean, maybe we've got an award with that band's logo or something like that, so that's gonna be ever present on your profile as well to continue marketing that band for the rest of time, right? Anybody else? Um, so this looks like anyone that has malintent and is a social engineer can try and abuse. Do you have any idea or regards as to how you, what kind of countermeasures you would take for that? In, in, in what regard? I'm sorry. Um, let's say Coca-Cola is having some quest happening. Mm. Somebody on the inside somehow 
gets a bad idea, like, hey, I can control a mob of people, you know, I can do a lot of things with this. Sure. How would you try and stop them from doing something bad with that? Well, our quests are all created um, in a very... <laughs> Our quests are created using a pretty complex system that we have right now. Eventually, in our next build, we'll have a much more uh, user-friendly admin dashboard on the back end. We actually, and he said it, uh, the first presenter, we use uh, comma-separated value sheets to actually create the information that goes into our quests. They're all created by us, and they're all monitored by us. So and they're in our back end, which is which very secure. At all. Um, that's also one of our fees is a creative fee, so we, there's also that factor. That not, not everybody is creative, so we allow that as a... So everything that we create that goes into our system comes from us. It gets vetted by our development team in LA, and then it goes into our system, and there's no toying with it after that. It's already yeah. there, and there's no editing the content of the, of the, the, the quest itself. Which uh, places am I, am I going to be able to use it? Only in the United States or worldwide? We're hoping for international. Uh, at this very point right now, we're growing out of the valley. So uh, right well, now, it's going to be mainly in the US. Right, so what we'll be doing is, what he mentioned was, uh, was Campus Cash and Cash Quest is two things that we're going to do to really start getting our name out. Um, cash Quest will be, we're actually starting down here probably in about a month or two, we'll be doing a Cash Quest. We'll hide $1,000 in each one of the counties down here in the, in the valley. We, you know, do about two weeks worth of marketing to get everyone, you know, informed. And then we'll launch the Quest at a certain time and you can join it. It's going to lead to different local businesses in which you're going to be, you know, encouraged to engage and share with, and then uh, the first person to the end, well, we've got a whole way that that all works. First person to win $1,000, you know, one of those cool big checks, you know. Um, and then Campus Cash is even cooler. We want to go to different universities around the nation and offer, let's say, $5,000, 4000 of which in a scholarship or grant, and $1,000 in spending money and make it more of an informational, you know, uh, activity that people can... Uh, educational, educational, or just fun. Uh, right. And so, wants. for students, you know, and just to kind of get it out to that student market. Would you like to eventually like to like uh, expand your team? Like make oh, absolutely. Team? Well, right now we're looking for a Series A investment, and it's kind of what we're headed out to San Francisco to go do. That's why we're attending these trade shows. Yeah, so like you can like not necessarily just between y'all monitor, but like let's say you have a whole panel of people like monitoring like all sorts of events going. On. Within within the next eight months, we plan to have a team of ten. We plan on having. I mean, in the future, I mean, we 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 plan on having everybody specific people for travel, taking care of events, but we don't want to have a whole you know, I guess a customer service kind of section, but it's mostly for creative use. So if you're making your own quest in the future by yourselves and you just, you can't think of a clue, you hop on our creative services and on live chat and somebody will help you through it kind of thing. I mean, there's a whole bunch of ideas for our future expansion, but. I want to go back to your point really quickly because I don't think we finished it up. One thing that I wanted to say is actually what we're working on right now is I've got a bunch of friends that I know who live in, you know, different areas, uh, you know, in, in Los Angeles, you know, Venice area, we got friends in Manhattan, Chicago. What we're going to do actually is uh, we're going to get them to start plotting location points, you know, on Venice Beach, in Manhattan, uh, Santa Monica Pier, um, Union Square in San Francisco, Fisherman's Wharf. We're going to go plot all those location points and actually from home, without traveling out there, we're going to start actually creating clue quests in those areas and we're going to release them to people so we can actually start hitting some test markets without actually, you know, breaking the bank and going out there to create them ourselves. Fairly amount of Quest. So we should have probably about 20 by the end of next month all around the nation that we'll have put together probably in the next month and a half that people will be able to do. So we definitely want to, you know, start reaching out to some test markets. We'll do, you know, obviously Austin, San Antonio, Houston down here, and of course the Valley is where we'll be getting our start. It's where we got our, you know, started our roots. But, uh, but yes, definitely working on a national outreach campaign. And we actually spoke to, I've got an uh, acquaintance at uh, European, uh, Europe's biggest touring company. I don't know, they do tours all over Europe, and they were interested in maybe uh, talking about implementing Clue as well as a way of eliminating tour guides. So. You guys have mentioned a couple of, uh, or at least one red flag that you guys noticed. Um, I noticed that, you know, you guys mentioned that you as founders, you don't have experience with the technical side of things. So um, first, how did you start developing the red flags? And then for those that are here that wants to develop apps or they want to develop any kind of software, what are other red flags that you have already noticed that you can say automatically you should start thinking about, you know, like what, what would be your advice to this? Well, I mean, it started off communication mostly. Um, it was the worst with communication. I mean, when we needed something done and we needed to see something, it was, okay, we'll show it to you in the next three days or so. Um, it also, I mean, it ended up with bug fixes that kept multiplying over and over again. I mean, they said they fixed it, but it kept happening again and again and again. It came to the point where we actually got um, a professional code reviewer out uh, 
out of state and they checked out the code and they're actually the ones who told us about all of the infidelities, I guess, in, in the code. The problems really that, that existed were, I mean, this app after 10 months that came through uh, actually had a load-bearing uh, maximum of 15 users on the server before the entire thing would crash and obviously we wanted to use that to go to x games where there's 150,000 people so if we have more than you know 0.01 is that what that is i'm not the statistics guy percent of those people you know joined us in you know uh we would have we would have crashed entirely but i mean as far as the red flags go yeah it's it's you know missing deadlines is definitely the biggest thing you know you want someone that's going to be punctual on your team and someone that's going to reply to you at a moment's notice us, you know, we, we have uh, our other company, GPGI Group, we do graphic design and marketing, and, you know, we pride ourselves in our customer service experience. We like to be emailing on the phone, you know, with our clients up until 3 in the morning. If we're up till 3, we're answering emails till 3. And so it's just, it's just those things, and, and what started happening, honestly, was that they were saying, okay, well, it's going to get fixed, and it'll be, you know, another couple of days, and another couple of days, and um, we started covering for them, you know, to our investor who was, you know, asking questions, wondering, you know, wondering what was going on, and we said, look, it's getting handled, it's getting handled, and there's only so many times that you can cover for somebody until you really realize that there is, there's a big red flag that you need to take care of. Yeah, yeah, you no, I mean, and, well, that's the thing. I mean, they, the, the breach of contract wasn't ever on our end. You know, there was several breaches of contract, which means, you know, obviously the contractually, the, the obligation was dead. Um, and uh, mostly comes down that we wanted to give them a chance so that they could grow without we, which is on our. That's on us. You know, we, we, we made the mistake and we let it drag on for far too long and we shouldn't have. But, uh, you know, you learn your lesson and, and you pick better people the next time. Before going to California, was there any other local possibility that could have handled it or I mean did you just try that one because it know, sounds yeah. difficult to believe you know that we have to send out everything when actually what we're trying to do is to handle it locally so you did great by giving them a chance but were there any other options there is there's always options obviously you know and and um well, there might have there, there, there definitely was but we were at that point we were on a time crunch and we had to get an application in the next three months so we didn't, we weren't allowed, we pretty much didn't have the chance to give more locals the opportunity to show us if they could possibly do it. But we, would, we definitely would have, but. What happened actually realistically was actually the recommendation for Start House came through of uh, one of our advisors. And so they had known them, grew up with them, and, and knew that they had, you know, scaled Lulu Grinder, some very huge applications, Walmart's check-in app, things like that. And so these guys were the real deal. And so they looked at our stuff, you know, put together a statement of work and said, yes, we can fix all of the mistakes. Also include, you know, these boosters, these, you know, all these different features, including, you know, the LTX engine and stuff for X amount in two months, you know. And so, and so we just knew that moment that we had to just pull the trigger on that and, and get going. And there's no more time to look around. Difference in price, a huge difference because of everything that you're saying sounds like it's a more professional, more complete, more... I'll put it this way. I'll put it this way. What we paid for the last two months is absolutely okay with us, but the uh, amount of money that we, that we wasted uh, in the previous 10 months is more than we'd like to disclose. So it was no good. So, I mean, we, what we should have, what we paid the first people, we could have paid the second people to get it done entirely. So, I mean, we, we wasted a decent amount of money and, and we did not get the professional level return, unfortunately. Seven, but, I mean, but the second guys, I mean, we're more than happy with what we paid them. Over there, I know your hand's been up for a while. Um, okay, this is a, a question in the entrepreneurial side. Uh, I, I believe that you mentioned the name of the company just for that, uh, the company from California. Startups. Startups. Yes. Okay. Uh, a lot of us, right, I mean, they probably have ideas for applications, and you guys just decided to, like, just go ahead and jump. I mean, you guys probably had a bad experience, but at the same time, it's very valuable experience, right? Mm -hmm. In the future, you decide to do another application, you know where to go, right? You know, you know all these mistakes are going to be done. Uh, but in this case, would you recommend young entrepreneurs to, you know, go and look for the, prof the professionals, look for some money, right, and then go for these professionals? Or instead, look for an, an investor. You know, come up with programmers and try to do it on your own. So you mean you mean the difference between going out and trying to find an investor before working, or or, or bootstrapping yourself? Yeah, I guess what I'm trying to figure out is that is it, is it primarily because you didn't want to keep it in your company, or because it was more like feasible to simply just hire another company on the outside? You know, like like a, like a third party to develop your code. 
Well, well, like we said, we, we can't do any development of code on our end at all, and we had exhausted our local resource that obviously didn't work out, so we went the next best thing, which is obviously a really great move for us. Um, but I think you're getting a little bit into, into bootstrapping if you have an idea and you don't have the money or the funds behind it, right? And so you look for a technical co-founder to join you and someone that can do the programming work, and you look for you know the little pieces of the puzzle so you can get your prototype built before pulling in money, right? Is that kind of what you're getting at? It's a great way to do it, absolutely. And there's certainly places that you can go uh, online and find people that are willing to work for sweat equity. It's difficult. I've tried before. Um, and, and it's definitely a difficult thing. But uh, it is possible, absolutely, you know, to find people to work for sweat equity and to, and to get a technical co-founder if you're not the technical guy and to get something put together to put in front of an investor. I mean, in our case, we, we went to an investor with an idea on paper and said, look, this is the idea, this is the future, and this is how big it can be. And that was before we even realized the actual scalable potential of the app in its entirety. And so what we've come up with finally now is something that, you know, they're behind and have put more money in to fuel this next stage of development because they believe in the, in the vision. But it's absolutely possible to, to get a prototype built without any money. Are you worried about the intellectual property problem? Like if you tell someone and they steal your idea, yeah. you have an iPhone, uh, an Android. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, I just meant. Do you have an iPhone? There's an application. Okay. There's an application called Shake, and it's really awesome. It automatically generates contracts. So it's called Shake. I think the website is ShakeLaw.com, um, and it's something that we use. Shake Law. So what do they call the contracts? It's not. Oh, not well. The non-disclosure agreements. There we go. The confidentiality says so non-disclosure or non-compete agreements that all you do is you fill in your name, the other person's name, and you put in a brief sentence of what you're describing and, you know, how long, you know, they can't compete with you and whatever. And then it automatically generates that and you put in their email address, sign it on your phone, send it to them, they sign it, and then it shows your log of all your completed, you know. So if it really is a, an intellectual property problem that you're, that you're worried about someone stealing your idea, it's a good way to protect yourself from the get-go. Um, but as far as moving forward with that idea, I mean, I would hop online. So there's a website, it's either called programmermeetsdesigner.com or designermeetsprogrammer.com, it's one of the two. Um, it's not the most modern site in the world and it's probably not the best, but you will get responses. You put up an idea and it's mainly for, it's younger people that are looking to, you know, kind of bootstrap businesses together. So it's entrepreneurs, there's three different groups of people, entrepreneurs, programmers, and designers. And you try to put together a team and start working on things in that regard. I haven't found any success with it, but I have gotten responses from, from qualified applicants. Um, you guys, like with the two of you, both of you are running together. Does that help, like having a partner in, like, uh, I guess, staying motivated, building that momentum, and talking to investors, and being like, uh, like, get, grabbing their attention? Definitely does. It does. John and I are two totally different people. While we're at the same time very similar, you know, when we became, you know, really great friends in college is because we both knew we had this entrepreneurial drive and this passion to build something of our own. But at the same time, we have totally different mindsets about a lot of different things. And so while one of us would look towards a big picture, another one would focus on smaller details. And, you know, so we play off of each other very well. He's a good, amazing co-founder. He's a great guy. So we work together very, very well. Um, and, uh, you know, I've had business partners in the past that were not as great, you know, absolutely. And uh, things don't work out because of that. So it's definitely, it's, it's good to find the right person that compliments you in every way. So um, I have a question. Uh, with your company, how did you go about getting it from, this is, I wasn't here for your last talk, you were here for your last talk. But going from, like, having the idea, getting together, like, hey, we can do this, to let's, let's go talk to investors. Let's go, oh, no. like, how... We can tell a quick story, I guess. Um, that's actually really funny. In our situation, um, we had told the idea to a couple people. Um, they were discussing it one evening, and this investor kind of overheard, and it was on uh, the 30th of December. And then this happened, and I was up in Minnesota, where I'm from, actually, uh, at the Mall of America that evening, and I was having a great night, and John calls me and basically tells me that this investor overheard someone talking about our application and said, hey, we want to make an investment in something by the end of the year, which was the next day. Um, wow. And so I actually... Until about, 
Uh, six well, I was, was yeah, we were up all night. Um, we ended up turning our two and a half page barely written business plan into a 12 page plan with financials by 11 the next morning. So I hopped back home, finished up the entire thing. And I, I hopped on the phone. John took the meeting in person and I was on the phone and uh, took about an hour and a half and we ended up with our first investment after. Literally one second. And, and the thing is, is that one thing is a recurring thing. I mean, it, there's one thing now, but then three months later, there's another thing, right? And that's what we're looking forward to, heading out to San Francisco to go meet with investors. I mean, we're, we're over the moon about it. I and mean, just the people that have contacted us, you know, the founder of the, of the event has followed us on Twitter. He doesn't do that with a lot of people. Um, and, you know, so we're excited for the exposure that we're going to get. And, and, you know, and hopefully we meet the next person, you know, that's going to start fueling our growth a little bit more. But uh, that's right, it's, it's about right place at the right time. And Honestly, it. it's, it's, a lot of it comes down to coincidence, luck, but obviously at the very end of it, there's obviously the hard work and the drive that you have to have to exactly, there you go, persistence, certainly. See your hand up over there. Sure, yeah, absolutely, if anyone wants to, where do y'all go to? Oh my nose. Of course, we will be there. Yes, absolutely. Last one was up there. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. How exactly would you describe your app? It's like Groupon meets <laughs> geocaching. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, and what's funny is we've been working on, you know, our elevator pitches for going to this trade show, right? And we realize we're going to run into five different unique types of people. We've got to figure out. We're going to run into layman consumers. We're going to run into tech bloggers, marketers, investors, and other startup founders, right? And so we've created our elevator pitch to kind of highlight in the first 30 seconds the different aspects that each one of those people need to know. As far as marketers and investors need to know, it's an amazing marketing tool, right? And that it can do X, Y, and Z and drive foot traffic and provide value to our certain clientele, right? But if you're a layman consumer coming in and asking about Clue, we want to pitch to you the exciting, fun applications and the future uses of your coins and the monetizing of those. And you know, so there's, there's different ways that we pitch it, but overall, it's, it's uh, uh, how we describe it is it's a first of its kind, smartphone, location-based challenge adventure application. So it's location-based challenge adventures. We like to say it's the perfect combination of a scavenger hunt and a treasure hunt. Whereas a treasure hunt guides you to different locations and a scavenger hunt is things you need to complete and do. We mesh the two and create a uh, uh, cohesive experience that kind of guides you know, foot traffic in a, in, a, in a very structured way. So it's an amazing marketing tool now. One day you'll just know what a clue quest is. Right. It's sort of, and so, right, so there's, that, there's, that, there's that curve, you know, where you have to obviously inform a consumer of what something is. So a clue quest is not a scavenger hunt. It's not a treasure hunt. It's a, it's a combination of the two. And so hopefully, you know, assuming that, you know, all of our marketing goes properly in the next few years, a clue quest would be, you know, just, uh, just another, exactly, would be a clue quest that requires less explanation than it does right now. But it is a complex, it is a complex, you know, uh, uh, first of its kind idea. So it is hard, but we do get geocaching a lot when we talk about it, um, although it is more interactive and engaging and step-by-step -step than geocaching would be. Awesome, guys. So we will see you at, oh, yeah. So uh, I saw on Facebook that you're gonna have a $1,000 quest here in the Valley shortly. Indeed. Uh, so who's actually, you're working with uh, on that, and when's that gonna take place? We're taking, we're taking applications right now for people, you know, that own businesses, you know, local retail shops, restaurants, things like that, that would prefer to be an anchor point along that quest to drive the foot traffic. Uh, so in doing that quest, you obviously are in the understanding that you will be visiting local businesses to engage with them in order to win the money, obviously, right? And so we'll be picking, you know, a few different local businesses and we'll be structuring that. Obviously, we'll yeah, be out of town for the next two weeks, but after that. Traveling a lot for the next month, so it won't be happening for about two months. About a month and a half of two months. But we do, like you said, we have an application online, uh, cluequest.com. Oh, let's, oh, did we, did, we, did we lose it? It's all gone. Oh, we lost it. Either way, um, cluequest.com, that's obviously with a Q, guys. Uh, cluequest, everything. So yeah, it's basically everything. So Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at cluequest, slash cluequest. You can follow us there if you want to win the drone. Obviously, next week, we're giving away a really awesome quadcopter with an HD camera. It's going to be sweet. Um, but... Yeah, we want to keep one, but we got to give it away. Um, did we answer your question? Did we get to the, yeah. the end of that? Awesome. Take your time. And we hope you enjoy the draft house. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.